We're live. Oh, yo, Shake, hold on, man. Let me put my stuff on, man. <laughs> well, we're live now, so. <laughs> yo, yo, you doing me dirty, Shake. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Hangout for a reason. Yeah, I thought this was a one-to-one -one hangout. <laughs> well, that 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 we got to make time for as well. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on one second. There you go. So we are we are live now. Oh, and you went high def on us. I had to. I had to. <laughs> but now you're all out of focus. It'll work. It'll get me. It'll get me. Inshallah. <laughs> I wanted to. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everybody. Uh, anyone who has already logged on and joined us here, you are here with us on kind of a quick ad hoc surprise version of the Qalam Hangout. And with us, we have here the author of <laughs> Digital Minimalism. Allahu Akbar. It's right here. It's right here. Right here. It's on my shelf. Oh, man. So this is, so for some of our Hangout folks, this is Sheikh Mikael Smith. He is, mashallah, one of our instructors at Qalam, uh, involved with a ton of different things uh, that we do at Qalam. You've probably uh, listened to a podcast at some point. You've probably watched YouTube videos with Sheikh. You've probably taken maybe even a Qalam Connect class. Uh, and he also, mashallah, teaches at the seminary uh, along with everything else. And so... Uh, but now uh, that we're all in this situation, so pretty much uh, we're either teaching, you know, seminary class or we're doing something online. Mm, so, yeah. alhamdulillah, um, one of the cool things that Sheikh's been doing is every single morning he has a live session that you can log on to. Uh, where he goes through like morning supplications, all the du'as that the Prophet ﷺ taught us to read in the morning. Mm -hmm. And also there's du'as for the evening. But in the morning time, especially, you know, uh, the du'a the Prophet ﷺ said, well, Allah for blessing in the beginning time of day for my ummah. Mm -hmm. So the sheikhs uh, been doing uh, really beneficial, mashallah. Uh, having the uh, morning supplication sessions mm. and then and then uh, one of the really cool things and that's where I was going to kind of pick your brain a little bit Shea, mm -hmm. was that um, as a part of you know obviously you know motivated by the situation that we're all in together as an ummah yeah, yeah. Um, but it was something that we had been talking about for a while we ended up really pushing forward with you know creating classes online and opening up the opportunity online for people to learn knowledge and for us to be able to deliver knowledge to them. So one of the very first classes, I remember I, I told Sheikh, one of the first classes we got to do as a part of this whole initiative is we need a class on emotional intelligence. Alhamdulillah. Um, yeah. So one of the big things that mashallah Sheikh has been able to achieve and accomplish uh, over the last couple of years is uh, he authored a book, wrote a book called With the Heart in Mind. Uh, <laughs> do, do, do you always have one with you? Um, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I mean, at my main desk, yeah. I mean, to be honest, like, no, on this desk is whatever I'm teaching right now currently. Yeah. And because we are doing this, so it was just, it's just at hand, you know. But I don't sit here and, like, I don't sit you don't, have to make, you, you don't have to make excuses. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Are you still there with us? Yeah, yeah. It, I, okay, it, was, it, was, it was catching lagging. up. Yeah, it was lagging a bit. But yeah, no excuses. It was lagging. Right. It, uh, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, no excuses. Man. No, but I was going to say, I, I was going to tell everybody, Masha Sheikh wrote this very, very beautiful book. And I told him, you know, and then he's been teaching this workshop. He's probably taught it in like, you know, 20 different communities across the country, if not more. And um, every single time he teaches that workshop, people are just absolutely astounded by the, 
the, the beauty and the wisdom of the mm -hmm. Sunnah and the Prophet Sallallahu character and all. And um, I told them one of the first classes we have to have one um, is we got to do the class on emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. So uh, your class, you had your first session of your class on Sunday, this past Sunday, right? Yeah. So what we're doing in the class, um, because, you know, uh, we started this free session for everyone, um, what we're actually doing is we're going through the book. Um, and so what I'm doing, normally when I do a workshop on the emotional intelligence of the Prophet Sallallahu um, I just take the main concepts of EQ and kind of uh, show what EQ is, number one, and also uh, show how that directly correlates to the life of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. Now, on top of that, what I do, in, but, but this book isn't only about em emotional intelligence. Um, there's a half of the book almost is about something called moral intelligence. Um, and so in, mm. this in this class, I'm able to now go into that topic of moral intelligence, you know, what we call moral compass calibration, right from wrong, um, istafti qalbak. You know, why did the Prophet ﷺ say to one person, ask your heart and another person, you know, he touched his heart and say, oh, Allah guide him. Or, you know, like other people, he worked to train them and someone else, he says, ask your heart. So we talk about, you know, what is moral intelligence and where's the intersection, uh, you know, big word nowadays, where's the cross and intersection between the moral intelligence and the emotional intelligence. And so basically, um, in the, you know, a registration is still open. We literally are reading sections starting from the beginning and just, uh, I'm going deeper into that uh, yeah. with uh, the students in the class. And 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 um, what's the name? Yeah, and just to clarify, because I don't want anyone to kind of like understand that somehow like, like they missed the boat. The registration is going to remain open. You can jump in. The second class is going to be this Sunday. Mm -hmm. And right now, today's obviously Thursday evening. That gives you two days. When you sign up for the class, completely free, by the way, mm -hmm. you'll get access to the recording of the first class. So you got yeah. two days to go through the first session and be ready to roll for the second session. But what I was specifically going to ask you, Sheikh, was one particular nugget or one gem, something that really, really maybe even resonated in the class, like really struck everyone in the class um, from the first class that you did. Oh, so, all right. So... One of the things that I think, okay, so what we talked about in the first class is in my introduction, um, I talk about how if you ask someone who is the most intelligent person you know or know of, yeah. normally yeah. our minds immediately go to a certain type of intelligence, right? And if you ask someone just in Starbucks, you know, they don't have good coffee, but if you have to go, you have to go. But so if you ask someone at Starbucks, it's, it's tough times. Why you got to pick on Starbucks right now? It's tough times for everybody, brother. True, 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 true. Okay. So if you're in Starbucks and you just ask a Muslim, right? Who's the most intelligent person, you know, normally, normally, you know, eight times out of 10, the person, the first thing comes to most people's minds is like Albert Einstein or someone, you know, Yeah, yeah. it's people, just, some it's, people go. Some people go straight to science. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then what I noticed is sometimes, and then I, I, I brought some proofs to this, religious, re, the religious people are often seen as the furthest away from intelligence, right? Not, not in our circles, but normally speaking. And so I, I even know, bring us- And a lot, of the, a lot of that's true, right? Like in, in kind of the culture where like my parents and whatnot, everybody came from, I studied abroad and overseas as well. That's always been the big knock on like kind of religious studies is that you kind of send the worthless kid, the troublemaker kid off the mother's side and so on and so forth. Yeah, but what we talked about, Sheikh, that's exactly what we talked about, Sheikh. But what we also brought up is how a lot of that was the effect of colonialism, where, you know, before that, so you take a place like Zaytuna uh, in, in, in the West Africa, that was a place where Ibn Ashur and great, amazing scholars 
of every type of science. We're teaching everything. I mean, um, even Ashu wrote a tafsir of the Quran in like 20 something volumes. That's nuts. Crazy. And but what's in it is so what we basically brought up now bringing this to this topic of intelligence is the question I brought up in class was when did we see the divorce between religion and intelligence? Where did that dichotomy and split come from? And so what I brought up, and it's in mm. the beginning of the book, is that most people know John Locke, uh, you know, from, you know, 16th century John Locke, most people know him for economics. That's what they right. don't know about John Locke is in 1689, he wrote a, 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 like a short treatise, you could say, called An Essay Concerning Human Understanding. And mm. in that, now this is crazy. Most people are like, wow, in that he did something that Isaac Newton, who was a hardcore theist at the time, yeah. wrote him back to John Locke saying, you've become an atheist and you've destroyed ration, uh, morality based on this paper. So what did he do in the paper? He basically said that the aqal or rationality was inside, uh, was not in the soul. It was part of the biological side of human beings. Mm -hmm. And so this is crazy because traditionally Razi and others, they said this, Hayawan insan is you have Hayawan, the body, but you have a ruh. Now listen, Razi says a ruh aqila, yeah. the soul, which is aqila. And so the aqal was part of the ruh, not just the body. Yeah. And what Locke did, this is crazy. He created, and this is, is very interesting. He created what he called the mind. And he mm -hmm. said that there's this thing called the mind and it's not part of the soul. Leave that, that no, the soul is whatever that's for God and da, 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 da. But this aqal is part of the body and da, 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 da. So we basically talked about how he separated the two. Now you're like, well, well, why are we even talking about this? Well, we're yeah. talking about it because the soul was understood to be the thing that recognizes Allah mm. through its, its, its rational faculties. Mm -hmm. So that is so, that basically the soul is intelligent. And by separating the two, you make the soul basically unintelligent, mm -hmm. archaic, this kind of like mindless thing. Yep. And only spiritual, only spiritual. That's right. That's what I was trying to say. It's just this thing that kind of feels stuff. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have any kind of intelligence to it. Yeah. Now, there was an upside to this. And this is what we're going to actually talk about in our next class. But the upside to this, oh, by the way, all of this is taken from a book called Soul Machine by George Makari. He really writes up. And now, one more thing. Uh, let me just back up a bit. Notice how Isaac Newton, who was living contemporary scientist, mm -hmm. he goes, you have just become an atheist and you've destroyed morality. Mm -hmm. He understood that by creating, taking out the mind or the, the, the rationality, oh, let, let me also, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place, but right? Yeah. So we have this concept within Islam that the qalb, now qalb doesn't mean the thing pumping blood, right? No. It's, it's something within us. That doesn't necessarily we don't really know where it is like it's in the human being it's more it's more of a it's more of an ability rather than an organ it, definitely definitely and now i know uh, in the book i talk about how actually imam shafi and imam abu hanifa have an ikhtilaf of where the qalb is is it in yeah. the dimag or it is in the body as whatever but yeah. so the, the interesting thing is just basically now how now there was an upside let's talk about the upside by separating the mind from the soul yeah uh what they started to do was treat illnesses of the mind the same way they treat the body interesting prior to lock if you got sick i'm pointing here you went to a priest mm. after lock you started to go to a doctor mm. but but here's the thing we have in our history someone by the name of Abu Zaid Balkhi. Yes. He was around at the time of 300 Hijri. Mm. He writes a manual on mental health. Beautiful. In, in year 300 uh, uh, Hijri, this is in, and he that's, talks that's, about- that's, 
that's 1100 years ago literally and but to put it into context for everyone listening 300 hijra means more than a thousand years ago i'll put it in a different context it's the same time of bukhari <laughs> like a little bit after bukhari yeah you know yeah. so 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 what what i try to show is that in islam we kept the soul as the aqal we kept it connected but we still treated it like mm -hmm. we, we we still treated it with with like um care uh, care and med like the, so the book he wrote is called masalihul abdan wal anfus the caretaking of, of the body and the nafas and nafas yeah. here means pure like here yeah. um well i'm pointing to the head but that's just because that's how we understand the the aqal but so basically that's kind of what we talk about oh one more thing um this is pretty cool the, so uh da, 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 da. so so one thing more which is like the concept of material mm. he created something in the book what he called thinking matter now thinking matter means materials that think now you may be like, okay where are we where are we going with this well where we're going yeah. is till now like and I'm not by any means, I mean, there may be people far more, uh, you know, qualified and neurologists and things, but based on the studies that we have, you know, all we see is the firing of new neurons. We can't really quite pin down where thoughts come from and what causes them. And what Locke did was interesting. He created what he called thinking matter. So mm -hmm. matter that thinks, and this becomes kind of the 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 point where materialism really gets its footing because we no longer need this soul which is immaterial that has yeah. aql we have a material that has aql which is called the mind um yeah. and so that's kind of what we talked about now again wait your books on emotional intelligence why are you talking about this because the question is what is the function of the intellect what is what does the intellect do and when yeah. you study Ghazali, when you study Razi, when you study Muhasibi, you and when you just read the Quran, you find yeah. Afala Go, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah, please. No, no, I was just gonna say, and it also makes sense, right? Because if you're if you're talking about emotional intelligence and we want to understand how to, you know, emotionally function and understand everything better and be more productive emotionally, then the problem that's getting in the way right now is a lot of times you have this kind of this brute, like just my, you know, this soulless, like mm -hmm. hyper kind of rationality and mm -hmm. hyper just, you know, yeah. logic kind of way of going about it where you're not feeling and, mm. you, and you don't you don't care about and then i know in your emotional intelligence a lot of times you're even talking about the people around you right yeah so yeah you're, you're my friend and you're upset and I'm just like, what are you so upset about? There's yeah. nothing to be upset about. Get over it. Are you stupid? Yeah. Get over yeah. it. Get over it. There's nothing to be upset about. And you're like, man, yeah. I was already feeling down. Now I feel horrible. Now, now you're yelling at me. That yeah. somehow supposed yeah. to make me feel better. And that's you know, that whole. A lot of this has to do with internet, man. The internet, you know, like, so the communication we use, and I know we joke about digital minimalism a lot, <laughs> but, no, no, but no. listen, listen. No, no, no. No, no, Sheikh. Yeah. You take it very seriously. I joke about it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, so digital minimalism. One of the things about uh, how we communicate um, mm -hmm. is normally, traditionally, we talked face to face. There was eye contact. Mm -hmm. I could read your emotions. Yeah. Um, you know, I could feel what you're saying. Now we have, you know, YouTube comments, Facebook comments. The way we talk to each other is not face to face anymore. Now, no. there's many upsides, but I'm going to focus on the downside. The downside is that disconnect that you're talking about where you forget that the person is a human being and okay. that human beings are not just rational computers. They are emotional beings. Yeah. Um, and, and, and if you want to convince someone, if you want to change someone's character, we're not computer programs that you just punch in a program and out comes the outcome. Everyone knows smoking is bad, but while he's smoking, he'll sit there and say, yeah, I know this is bad. Yeah. So 
the emotional, so back to the digital minimalist, the point is like by communicating more face to face, yeah. Um, then you build that capacity to understand emotion and you build the capacity to communicate um, the way humans communicate, I would, I, mean, I would say. I mean, come on, it's so simple. Like how many times have you had a misunderstanding with someone or a misunderstanding occurred between you and someone through text messages? Yep, exactly. 100%. I mean, all the time. 100%. How about this? The creation of emojis. Like, if you really think about it, the whole point of emojis is we realize that we need it to communicate emotion as we text it. So we had to create that ability to communicate emotion. Otherwise, that human side of was just uh, absent. So yeah, yeah. That, I mean, I mean if, you, if you text me, Salaam Alaikum, and I text you, Wa Alaikum Salaam, and it just reads like, Wa Alaikum Salaam, right? When, when you and I know each other because, well, not right now, because we're socially distancing because we're responsible human beings. Yes, we are. We're well, in the same, but, we're only two miles, three miles apart, but we, it's, yeah, I know. it feels like we're on the other side of the world, man, subhanAllah. Ajeeb. But normally, on a, 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 in normal circumstances, we see each other five, if not six days a week. Yeah. And you know, because we interact so much, that when you say, Salaam Alaikum, I never say Wa Alaikum Salaam. I'm always like, Wa Alaikum Salaam. Hey. Literally. It yep. comes out like that. But if I type it out, it just comes out as Wa Alaikum Salaam. Yeah. And if somebody, you, if we didn't have that kind of like, you know, uh, interaction and relationship kind of stored from before. Yeah. And somebody texts me for the first time, they're going to be like, oh man, he's, he's, he's kind of, he's kind of serious. He's serious. He's serious. Like what's up, you know? Yeah. And you know, one other thing about that too, is a lot of times we project feelings into things without the emotion there. So, you know, it's like, is this person upset with me? because you have something within you, you mm. read that because you don't have the emotions. Now you've projected onto that. You read it the way you want to read it almost psychologically. You, you get what I'm saying, right? I do. So you project that emotion. And when you talk, you're like, yo, are you upset? They're like, what are you talking about? Mm. And, and you read all the messages in the tone that you're projecting onto that person. And that isn't even what they meant from the beginning. And so I think for a lot of people ask me like, well, you taught me about emotional intelligence. I realized the importance of it. How do I increase my EQ? And simply, simply put, um, you have to just become a better, excuse me, a better listener. Mm. Yo, Sheikh, there's something I, I, I thought about. Kul huwa udun. Kul udun lakum. Like, I know that context. So let me talk about the verse real quick. The verse says they used to kul uh, huwa They used to make fun of the, what the context is. They used to make fun of him that he just is a parrot. Like yeah. uh, he's just a udun. He hears. He doesn't have anything of his own. Yeah. All right. So they're calling the prophet naudu bilah a udun. Udun means ear, meaning he doesn't have anything himself. He's just hearing stuff from somewhere and he says it. Yeah. Um, and, and so if you take udun, if you take semi yesmau and lay it out throughout the Quran. You find it repeating over and over. And then Allah says, Kul lakum. Like, you need to become an Udun. You That's need to amazing. Be, you know, so I haven't had the chance to write on it yet. But, you know, I really, really feel, especially, subhanAllah, in Corinth, in, in this lockdown, learn how to listen. And to be real with you, I'm not going to front. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. You know, take, here's this. I have a, I have a, a three-year-old, right? And, and, and there's, there's like memes about this where the, where the three-year-old is like, mommy, so I was uh, going to tell you like, um, so mommy, I was going to tell you. And like, they keep saying the same thing over and over. And you're like, get to the point, just say <laughs> it, right? But when you're listening to children and listening to elderly, it takes a higher level of tahammal. Yeah. I was, I was actually just talking to somebody and, you know, uh, a lot of folks and may Allah protect everyone out there. Uh, may Allah protect everyone's parents, everyone's grandparents, mm -hmm. but a big part of this situation is also, and I, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, but kind of managing the situation with 
you know, if you have elderly parents or grandparents. Um, I was talking to my dad yesterday and my dad's like, yeah, you know, by next week, you know, things should be, you know, a lot more calmed down and uh, I'm going to go take care of some work and some meetings and things I got to do next week. And I was just like, <laughs> and, and every, like every cell in my being wants to be like, no, you're not going to do every stop. Exactly, right? exactly. And, and I'm just, and then you, like you said, it takes a lot. So I just was kind of like, listen, dad, please, inshallah, <laughs> don't make any plans right now. And, you know, I, I, I trust you, mashallah, you have husnul dhan billah, you make dua. If things are calmed down, I personally will take you everywhere where you need to go. Allah, Allah, Allah. But if it's not worked out yet, then inshallah, we got to still kind of stay at know, home. Yeah, yeah, we got to stay at home. We got to play it safe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's like, yeah, yeah, it'll be fine next week. You know, it's like, no. You know yeah. what you just reminded me of in this conversation, this point? You remember that short, short like clip where the older elderly man keeps asking his older son, what bird is that? Yeah. So I, I think that really ties into what we're saying right now, because the elderly man says, look, when you were a, a child, mm. it was hard to listen to you. Mm. And now that I'm old, it's hard to listen to me. So okay. all I'm trying to highlight, oh, one last cherry on top. Uh, I, the last story in the book, actually, Adib bin Hatim. Yeah. If the, remember when he see, he walks with the prophet home yes. and an elderly woman stops the prophet on the way? SubhanAllah, remind me. So, so the story is basically Adib bin Hatim. He says that as I was walking the, with the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, home, and meaning, okay, Adib bin Hatim had run away from Medina. Uh, yes, Adib bin Hatim, his, his, his sister had went to meet him and convinced him, why don't you, you're a smart man, go meet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Adib bin Hatim comes to Medina. And uh, so here it is. I, I quote it, or I found the page right, page right here. It says that um, Adib bin Hatim, uh, the prophet grabs his hand and he walks with him. So the prophet understood all, all that all the cognitive and emotional barriers that had to be removed in order for Adi to properly receive the message of Islam. And the Open first part of, yeah, he had to soften him up. He had to remove all the barriers. So he starts to walk with him home. And he says, while he was taking me there, a weak elderly woman met him and him and, and asked him to talk to her. And he stood for a long time while she explained her need to him. That's right. I said to myself, I swear by Allah, this is not the behavior of a king. He must yes. be a prophet. So, yeah, like, because that's that was Adib bin Hatim's uh, kind of little bit of last reluctance or hesitation is that if this is some king who's going to, you know, take advantage of the people and this and that, then I don't want to throw my lot in with him. Mm -hmm. And but so to me, it's like when people ask. And, and, it, and, I, I, and I talk to myself first, but, you know, when people ask how to increase your EQ, the key is learning, building the, the ability to listen. Um, yeah. and, and you know what's interesting, Shake? I've seen like three articles about how domestic violence and child abuse and even divorce is increasing because of the time. Uh, of people being forced to be around one another. Yeah. Um, and to me, it kind of talks about, and maybe I'm reaching here. It's just a reflection. I, I've been just thinking about it. Like, you know, I'm forced to be with my children all day now. Was I just trying to run away from them? Cause I, I, I couldn't, I didn't have the tahammal and patience to sit with them and talk with them and was I running away from my spouse because I didn't have the ability and work was an excuse to get away um you know so I think the the everyone's talking about the silver lining the silver lining I think one of the silver linings of this what we're going through is learn to listen better to the people who are closest to you and become Absolutely. a better a better listener and Absolutely. so that's that's one of the you know take home I encourage everyone join in the class, man. Yeah. I mean, 
I, I, I just wanted everyone to be able to hear something powerful like that, like a gem, something they can really benefit from immediately and start to implement. So like I said before, um, the class is every Sunday, uh, but you can head on over to the Qalam website, qalam.institute, uh, and then sign up. It's a part of our whole initiative of making knowledge accessible for everyone. So uh, prophetic EQ, emotional intelligence of the Prophet Wasallam class with Sheikh Mikhail every Sunday. First class happened, but it's a free class. So you sign up and you sign up so that we can then send you the recording of the first session. Mm -hmm. And you got two days and you can be ready to roll with him live on Sunday for the second session. And along with that, there's other classes on there that are going on as well. Class for teenagers, class for kids, mm -hmm. class for adults who want to learn how to read the Quran. Um, and inshallah, today's Thursday. Next Thursday, we're going to be having a special class. Uh, you'll be able to sign up there in a day or two. We'll be putting it up soon. But next Thursday evening, we're going to have a special class about the fiqh of Ramadan, Allah the fiqh of fasting, uh, and, and just all the rules and regulations of fasting. We'll talk a little bit about tarawih and obviously speak about kind of the special circumstances of tarawih and, um, you know, give everyone some kind of structure and mm. some uh, operating procedure. Uh, and then the Thursday after that, um, the, which will be the last Thursday before Ramadan starts, inshallah, uh, we're going to have another workshop Thursday evening uh, on the fiqh of zakat, uh, how to calculate your zakat, how to discharge your zakat. And somebody might be saying, why are you talking about zakat right now? A lot of people mm. have Ramadan marked on their calendar as the time to give their zakat. Mm. We're in a lockdown but we're going to not forget our duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And we're also not going to forget those less fortunate than us who are really, really suffering right now. Yeah, so we're going to have a zakat workshop as well. So you know exactly how to calculate and give your zakat, inshallah, bismillah. And every morning, tomorrow morning, inshallah, uh, you can log on and uh, yes. do your yes. morning supplications. Yeah. yeah, let me give a plug for this. Let me give a plug. Listen, guys, everyone joining us. Um, the morning supplications is just a time to listen and recite some du'as that the Prophet Sallallahu has taught us to bring barakah to our mornings, right? Yeah, so yeah. starting off your morning a strong, you know, first thing, it's 8.30 our time, um, you know, and uh, just, just to have that extra, uh, you know, blessing in the morning and that spiritual connection. Um, and so we're here for you. I'm doing it every morning, inshallah. So please, please join us for that, inshallah. It's, inshallah, I pray that it will bring uh, blessings and uh, benefit to your mornings, inshallah. Huge, huge, absolutely. Well, Jazakallah khair, everyone for logging on and for listening, and thank you very, very much, Sheikh Mikael, of course, uh, for jumping on real quickly. Um, yeah, more than anything, more than y'all getting to attend this session and whatnot, I got to look, look at Sheikh Mikhail for a little while. Allah Akbar, Allah, <laughs> Allah, Masha Allah. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the blessed one, alhamdulillah, <laughs> to be in uh, your presence, man. Jazakallah khair, everyone, man, for reaching everyone, out. Everyone, take care, everyone. Jazakallah uh, khairan, keep us in your prayers as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.